Hi, it's DeWire, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. Today it's Friday, October 8th, 2021. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let's ask a foundational question. Who is the toughest challenge going forward for Oleksandr Usyk, the new heavyweight champ? Is it the man he just beat, Anthony Joshua, who's seen him for 12 rounds? Is it Tyson Fury, a fighter who got dropped at one point by another cruiserweight champ, Steve Cunningham? Is it Deontay Wilder? Huge puncher, but low volume. Does he have the mobility? Does he have the timing to beat an Usyk who's a bit of a boxing master, who moves better than him, who has the faster feet? I would argue that it's none of those guys. Folks, the door has been open to a new crowd. What I want people to do in considering the future is looking back at the past. I know many people felt that Derek Chisora gave Usyk one hell of a fight. I'm just here to tell you, and the films are online, that Usyk was tested even more in the first half of his fight against Maris Breedis, who right now is Ring Magazine's cruiserweight champion. By the way, Breedis already jumped up to heavyweight and KO Manuel Char, who was heavyweight champ for a while. Right, Breedis has already shown that he could take out bigger heavyweights. Understand, now that the door has been kicked in, now that a cruiserweight, former cruiserweight, sits atop of the heavyweight division, we have to start considering the possibility, and I believe it's a distinct one, that we're coming out an era of giants, right? Guys who prioritize power more than mobility. Guys who weren't great boxers. We'll exclude Tyson Fury from this, but guys who weren't great boxers, who, you know, weren't defensively blessed. Not a lot of head movement between Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua. And now we're getting back to the norm. Right? Understand, Lennox Lewis was a huge heavyweight. The Klitschko's were huge heavyweights, historically. You go back and you look at the size of a Jack Dempsey, of a Rocky Marciano, of an Ezard Charles, of a Jersey Joe Walcott, of a Sonny Liston, and you're going to find that these champs weren't big like Deontay Wilder or Anthony Joshua. So now boxing is moving away from size and power back to boxing. I'm just here to tell you that Maris Breedis fought Alexander Usyk in the semifinal of the Super, uh, the World Boxing Super Series. The fight was in Breedis' backyard. Both guys were unbeaten at the time. Now if you're in a boxing, the footage is breathtaking. Right? Let's describe Breedis' style. Let me also do this. I know there are boxing trainers online. Teddy Atlas, for example, has an excellent YouTube channel. I know that there are boxing analysts who comment on my videos. Right? I want to encourage everyone to talk about what they perceive to be the styles of the boxers. Now, Maris Breedis is a guy who, in my opinion, is very unorthodox. 
He's that older fighter who, unlike Usyk, who will have his hands up, who always has his defense ready, right? Whether he has figured you out or not, Usyk is a guy who really relies on the fundamentals. Maris Breedis is the vet who understands that there are shortcuts that give him an advantage at times. So, it takes a lot of energy to keep your hands up for 12 rounds. Most aren't willing to make that kind of commitment. They would rather increase their stamina. So you'll notice with some older fighters, they'll drop their hands. They'll start to rely on their reflexes. You throw a punch, the guy will lean back. Right? The guy is planning to dodge your punches unprotected. Now I have to tell you, reflexes dim over time. You have had some fighters with, quite frankly, spectacular reflexes. I remember a young Hector Macho Camacho. Right? Dropping your hands could work when you have young reflexes, early 20s. Maris Breedis is now 36 years old. There comes a time when you can't trust your own body. As Ali famously said, he could see the punches coming. He just could no longer get out of the way of them. Right? And so, Maris Breedis is a guy who cuts corners. He's so unorthodox to me that it looks like he's just standing in front of a fighter at times. Right? The guy throws, Breedis will just move away. Breedis looks flat-footed. But then you look at the film more closely and you notice Breedis is actually moving. You notice he's two-handed. Great power in both hands. You'll notice he's the kind of guy who has some Roy Jones in him. Another guy who dropped his hands, who was unorthodox, whose lack of attention to detail caught up with him later in life. You'll notice that Breedis, whose only loss was to Usyk. You'll notice that Breedis will move to the side, slip in a devastating hook to a guy's body. But you'll notice Breedis is unstructured. He's a jazz man <clears throat> in a rhythm sport. Right? So he's a guy who'll hit you in the ribs with a good body shot. Then he'll slide a little bit you don't see him pumping a jab to get in. He's sudden. He can pot shot you the entire fight. But this is an advanced fighter. He's one of the world's best, pound for pound. This is a guy who has a gift that Lennox Lewis had. He can loop his punches. So he throws a hook, you have it blocked. It doesn't throw him off. Right? He'll throw another hook. Only this hook will be looped. And of course, he's switched on. So you try to counter him in between the two hooks. And he's ready to move out of the way. Right? Again, this is that fighter who has reflexes, is calm, is unafraid, can drop his hands can fight outside, can fight inside. He can be structured, but he prefers not to be structured. You know, one of my heroes in life, the great NBA player Bill Russell, a, a lefty, Breedis is right-handed, but Russell said the great ones are always different. In other words, there's a right way to do things, then there's the way the greats do things. I believe Breedis is almost impossible to prepare for because his style is so unique. Again, this is the guy who looks like he's just standing in front of you, right? He's not running away from you. You don't see a lot of back foot. He's more horizontal than front and back. But what you'll notice is 
The guy is ready to avoid your shots, whether it's by reflexes or by a hand up. And the guy can throw any punch back. His timing is impeccable, even though it's unorthodox. So for the first five or six rounds of his fight against Usyk, you had boxing at the highest level. Right? Quite frankly, I thought Breedus got off to a good start. I thought Breedus had a slight edge on Usyk after, let's say, the first five rounds. But then something unique happened. You know how boxers use their legs, the guys who dance, the guys who move. They'll use their legs to get away from you. Right? Think Tyson Fury in the first Wilder fight. Or think Tyson Fury in the Klitschko fight. Right? A fighter will be dancing and they'll dance away from the pocket. You start to come to them, you're walking into a jab. They're throwing combinations. The second half of the Usyk fight, if you're into boxing styles, is a must-watch. Because Usyk is dancing, he's on the balls of his feet, in the pocket. He understood. You cannot give Maris Breedis time to think. Because Breedis is episodic, because Breedis is outside and he's hanging around, then he comes inside and he's throwing, you know, hooks and stuff like that, and he's somehow circling you while looking flat-footed. Right? What you need to do is to literally get up in his face. And the thing with Usyk, who's structured, is Usyk's right hand, his jab, he likes to play games with it. It keeps the other fighter on his heels. So Usyk won't come and just throw the jab. Usyk waves his hand. Right? Then Usyk faints, faints like he's throwing a jab. Then Usyk's throwing straight lefts. Usyk's throwing hooks. Usyk's doing a lot of other things. So Usyk, about midway in the Breedis fight, right? Breedis is unbeaten at the time. Right? Usyk comes in the pocket and starts keeping Maris Breedis busy all the time. Right? Pressure breaks pipes. Usyk wins a close decision. Now understand how dominant Breedis is. That's the only time Breedis has lost. His only loss is to a reigning heavyweight champion, right? Usyk just got the heavyweight title. The point is simply, that's the only guy who has beaten Maris Breedis. Breedis then goes on after Usyk leaves the division, undisputed. Breedis then goes on to get his title back and to actually win the World Boxing Super Series Cruiserweight Tournament, right? He beats Dordekos to do it. Understand, this is a fighter who's beaten Marco Huck, a guy who gave Alexander Povetkin at heavyweight a very competitive fight. And understand, Povetkin, when he was closer to his prime, was one of the best athletes in the heavyweight division. So, Breedis is taking on Arthur Mann, a German, for his cruiserweight title in the next few days. Now let me just say, in my opinion, Arthur Mann, and Mann lost once. He got stopped by Kevin Lorena. But Arthur Mann, in my opinion, and this is a cruiserweight, is better than most American heavyweights right now. Folks, I've been through some slow times in American heavyweight boxing. I don't believe the cupboard has ever been emptier. Right? I look at some of these heavyweights. We'll find out a lot in the Agaba 
Frank Sanchez fight. Of course, neither of those guys really is American, right? One's Nigerian. I believe Sanchez is Cuban or Puerto Rican, right? But let's just say there was a time when the heavyweight division in the United States went five or six deep, right? In the 1970s, you didn't even have to leave the country to be dealing with Foreman, Fraser, Ali, Norton, Holmes, Ernie Shavers, right? There were many tough, Jerry Cooney, there were many heavyweights. These days, I'm in the United States. You may have guessed, I'm a boxing fan. I look at the heavyweight division and I'm scratching my head. You know, uh, guys like Rydell Booker are getting out of prison. And he seems to be one of the more skilled American heavyweights. He's been beaten a couple of times, but let's just say Arthur Mann, to me, is structured. He is advanced. He has a good jab. He has a back foot game. He has a sneaky right hand. He has an excellent right uppercut. I get the feeling this is a patient fighter who waits a few rounds before showing you what he can do with his right hand. He has good timing. He's a solid counterpuncher. Right? Let's just say, to me, that puts him ahead of most American heavyweights. This is a very important fight. I think Maris Breedis successfully defends his title, but understand, Breedis is 36. Understand, Breedis does want to fight at heavyweight. I need to have people realize that his fight against Usyk was in doubt as late as the 10th round. Right? He's already been in the ring with, quite frankly, a former heavyweight champ in Manuel Char and a future heavyweight champ in Alexander Usyk. Now, as I look at the heavyweight division, understand, right after Usyk beat Joshua, Former champion Steve USS Cunningham was online on Twitter saying that he thought Usyk would beat Tyson Fury because Cunningham believes Usyk's just too elusive. He's just too coordinated, right? And of course, Cunningham felt that the ending of his fight, and it was dirty, against Tyson Fury, where he drops Fury, it's not a slip. Fury's not contending it was a slip. Was dirty. Right? One of the reasons Fury's so good is Fury got desperate in the Cunningham fight. Then started coming inside Roberto Duran style with elbows, with leans, with forearms. And of course, he was able to stop Cunningham. Right? Cunningham believes he's not mobile enough to beat Usyk. It's an open question on how he would do against Maris Breedis. Now again, Breedis is fighting two opponents, right? He's fighting the actual guy in the ring, Arthur Mann, in a few days, but he's also fighting Father Time, right? He's 36, and of course, his style, which is to drop his hands, which is to rely on, you know, reflexes and stuff like that, right? That works until it doesn't work. But just to understand, you're in the middle of an invasion of the heavyweight division by cruisers. You need to also look at Lawrence Okole, right? Look at his size. Look at his jab. Ask yourself whether Derek Chisora could get by the jab. Ask yourself whether if a Coley flashes that jab on Joseph Parker, who is a slow starter, right? I believe the only two fights I've seen Joe pissed off in are the Junior Fa fight, right? And the Yui Fury fight. I thought Fury was Joe's best moment, right? But 
You need to understand, just looking at size, Okoli's taller than Joseph Parker. Right? Also, just thinking about the heavyweight division, and I know there's some new division, the Bridgerweight division, or whatever it's called, between cruiser and heavyweight now. Understand, most of the heavyweights in history were much smaller, I mean much smaller, than Tyson Fury, than Anthony Joshua, than Deontay Wilder, right? You have had some big champs in history, Jess Willard, uh, Primo Carnera, right? Big George Foreman. But understand, this era was noteworthy because it was so big and clunky. Right, the cruiserweights, as they enter the heavyweight division, are actually bringing back historical norms in terms of size. Right, David Hay, cruiserweight champion who became heavyweight champion, David Hay is really about the size of most of the heavyweights in history. Right, and so since we've reached a time where and Anthony Joshua really can't move his head, right? That's just the reality, right? I thought Joshua boxed extremely well for Joshua, right? But you understood you weren't watching Ali, right? Deontay Wilder, let's face it, I believe 9.9 .9 out of every 10 people watching this video know that the only way Wilder can beat Tyson Fury is with a straight right hand. Right? You're not going to watch the fight and suddenly see something else. Right? That's not, <laughs> that's not going to happen. Right? He's not going to bludgeon Tyson Fury with the jab. That's just not going to happen. Right? Well, the problem is, what happens when he fights a tall guy? Let's say a Lawrence Okole, who has a great jab. And Okole is able to stay out of harm's way. In other words, Okole is focused on that wilder right hand. You have to be. And Akoli is able to just bust him up because that's what a good jab does. Bust up the other guy with the jab. Don't you think that cruisers, who's these days, the weight limit's 200 pounds, don't you think a cruiser for a one-off can get to 210 and take out a clunky heavyweight? So Maris Breedis, I'm just telling you, this guy's dangerous. I believe it's a mistake to think of the top heavyweights and to ignore cruisers who could jump up and who could create problems. Right? Usyk, I believe it's his third fight at heavyweight that got him the title. Right, his first two, I believe he fights Chaz Witherspoon. Right, and Witherspoon hadn't fought for a while before that fight. Then he fights Derek Chisora. And that prepared him to fight and beat Anthony Joshua on British soil. Right, Maris Breedis has already destroyed, folks, that's the word. You watch the knockout yourself. He's destroyed Diamond Boy. Manuel Char. I believe he leaves Char unconscious. Right? That's a stoppage. Are you sure that if this guy successfully defends his cruiserweight title now, and if something happens at heavyweight, and let's face it, something always happens at heavyweight, doesn't it? Where's the A.J. Wilder fight we were promised? Right? Even you know, Wilder and uh, Fury, you could make a full-length movie of the drama that it's taken for us to get the third fight. And even that fight got postponed. Right? If something happens in heavyweight, lawsuit, uh, someone's injured in training, uh, you name it. Someone goes AWOL. If a Maris Breeder steps in, I'm just telling you, Whoever he's fighting better be prepared. Very important fight coming up. Maris Breedis.
Ring Magazine's Cruiserweight Champion. He also has one of these sanctioning body belts. Give it a look. His opponent is excellent. Arthur Mann only has one loss. Right, he was caught with a left hook. That really was a one-punch stoppage. I think Arthur Mann is underrated. I just think he's in with a great fighter. I like Maris Breedis in this one. I do believe that if Arthur Mann decided to be a heavyweight, especially if he were fighting American heavyweights, I believe he would clean up. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. What makes this Breedis Arthur Mann fight particularly interesting is Arthur Mann is very orthodox. You look at him, you say, oh, this guy's foundational. He's doing things the right way. I believe that's going to be his weakness against Maris Breedis, a guy who can cut corners, a guy who doesn't have to keep his hands up for 12 rounds. Right? A guy who doesn't have to be on his back foot for extended periods of time because he's mastered horizontal movement. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.